Hi guys, this is Brian. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, today we're going to uh, do some calculations with the E6B. Uh, yeah, today we're going to do some calculations for course correction and for altitude correction. And if you look on the left hand side of the interior windows of the E6B, you have uh, gradation marks and 5 degrees Celsius for outside air temperature and for pressure altitude. Uh, similar I don't know if you saw the video that I did yesterday, but yeah, there's a very similar window on the right-hand side that's used to calculate the density altitude, which is also used for true airspeed. But uh, yeah, first I would like to show you some calculations for um, yeah course correcting, yeah, course corrections, and what you're going to need for these are uh, distances. Uh, you have to know where you're at. That's the that's the main important thing. You, okay, you're off course. You don't know where you're at, but you figure it out. You need to find out your exact point that you're located at, and then from that point, you got distances. So you should be able to find. A, you know, you get this off of your chart, or there's a lot of places you can figure this out. You need a distance that you're off your course, uh, distance from your departure, distance uh, to your destination, and uh, with combination of those, you should be able to figure out a parallel angle. There's two angles: a parallel angle and a converging angle. And the total of those ang the total of those angles should put you exactly where you intended to be in the first place. Uh, so we'll walk th through a couple of uh, examples. Yeah, I wrote down some questions. See if I can answer these. Um, yeah, distance off course. So you should, um, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's east or west. Uh, yeah, you would take these uh, angles and you would add them to your original course that you're on, and you should um, come up with a heading that you would steer your plane to. But, okay, in these first examples, we're going to give uh, distance off course. You, you realize you're eight nautical miles off course. Uh, your distance from departure is 150 nautical miles. Uh, distance to destination is 160 nautical miles. And for this one, they just you're asking for a paralleling angle. Basically, you are not going to converge on your destination. You're just going to, your, your original course, you're just going to parallel with your original course. So actually, the... You look at this, actually the distance to destination, You, to answer that question, you don't even need distance to destination. But uh, on the outside, yeah, this doesn't, uh, yeah, the way that this works is uh, the outside of the E6B are distances. And the inside is also distance. But the distance off course is the outside. So 8 nautical miles, you look around the outside of here, you don't have 8, you have 80. And uh, 80 miles distance off course and 150 miles distance from departure. So line up 80 with 15. And yeah, your rate mark down at the bottom will point to a number. And here you see 30, 1, 32. And you need to drop a decimal place. So that would be 3.2 degrees. The paralleling angle would be 3.2 degrees. Um, that would not converge on your destination. That would parallel your original course. All right, let's work through another example. You have... Uh, you find out you're 25 miles, 25 nautical miles off course. Uh, distance from your departure, you're 240 nautical miles when you find out that you're off course. And um, the distance to your destination is 100 nautical miles. What's the paralleling angle? What's the um, converging angle? And then what's the total converging angle? Okay, distance. Off course, it'd be on the outside of the E6B, so you have 25. 25, uh, line up 24 with 25. 
24 with 25 gives you, uh, look over to your rate of 60, which that doesn't make sense as a rate, but that's what you look to. I've got 61, 2, and a half. So I'd say 62. So you drop a decimal place, you have 6.2 degrees. 6.2 degrees. And what's the converging angle? Uh, from the point you realize you're off course, there's an the angle you would need to turn from the paralleling angle to converge. So what would that be? So you take the distance from your departure, you'd ignore this distance, and you'd use 25 and 100. So yeah, go to 25 on the outside of E6B, and turn, there's no 100, so you drop a decimal, use a 10, line up 25 with 10, look to the 60, look to the rate mark, and that points at about 15. And yeah, I'm not going to drop a decimal. In this case, I'm not going to drop a decimal. 15 degrees. Yeah, so the total converging angle, you would add these. You'd add 6.2 degrees to 15, and you would get 20, 21.2 degrees. Total converging angle. So. If you turned 21.2 degrees towards your destination, added that to your heading, uh, that should put you, whether it's east or west, doesn't matter which direction it is, that should put you to converge on your original destination. So let's do one more example of this. So. Uh, you're 60 nautical miles from your departure, and you realize you're 10 nautical miles off course. Uh, what is your paralleling angle? Well, your distance off course, you'd look on the outside of your E6B for 10. That'd be at the very top. 10, line that up with 60. Oh, that's the same as your rate mark. So, uh, yeah, your 10 is already there. So, that's actually the angle you already had to begin with. 60 nautical miles, that would be 10 degrees. What's the converging angle if you're 40 nautical miles from the destination? 10 nautical miles off course. So, yeah, we'll turn the yeah, distance off course is there. You want to turn this to 40. Line up 40 with 10. Look to the rate. That would be 15. That'd be, is that right? Yeah, about 15 degrees. So add those together, you get 25. Total correction angle of 25 degrees. Right. And that's course correction from the front side. Now there's another course wind correction on the back, but yeah, that's the course correction on the front of the E6B. And there's also an altitude correction. This one is um, really similar to calculating density altitude. But you have a you have an air temperature, your OAT, in this black window. Then underneath you have a pressure altitude. So to correct for altitude, you need to know what the air outside air temperature is, and you need to know what your pressure altitude is. And this Example, okay, outside air temperature, minus 15 degrees Celsius. Pressure altitude, 9,000 feet. So, take these tick marks and 5 degrees, so here's your minus 15. Line that up with 9,000 feet, that would be 9. Then you want, you have an indicated altitude of 9,500. So, interior is um, 9,000, 9,000, and uh, true
true altitude would be on the outside. This is indicated. True would be out on the exterior. I personally don't consider that to be true altitude. I consider that to be more like corrected, uh, corrected altitude. But there's a little bit more to it, but yeah, we're, they're calling, yeah. That's approximately true altitude. But look at 9,500 on the inside. Nine, there's 95. And then look opposite of that. So nine, your altimeter is telling you 9,500. In reality, it's more like 9,000. Nine. Thousand. So that is a little bit of a problem. So if you're flying low and there's a lot of cloud cover, yeah, the altimeter is actually in this case telling you you're 500 feet than you actually are. So that's one good reason that you need to calculate your true altitude. Indicated altitude isn't always uh, accurate. Can be off by hundreds of feet, which is not necessarily a good thing, and most of the time it isn't. So let's look at, uh, here's another example. Yeah, we're going to take uh, this example. The outside air temperature of 20 degrees, pressure altitude 9,000 feet, indicated altitude of 10,500. So basically the same thing. Look at your outside air temperature on uh, this little, these black numbers inside of this window on the left, plus 20. Line that up with 9,000. These are in units, these are in thousands of feet, so line up plus 20 with 9. And indicated is on the inside ring. Outside ring is true, or approximately true. So look at 10,500 is not on here. You have to move decimals. So 10.5 would be 10,500. Look opposite, and that looks like about 11.3, 11.4, 11 11.3. I'm going to call that 11,300 feet TALT, true altitude. And uh, that's the two calculations I'm going over today. That's course correction and altitude correction. Uh, you can use your distances inside and outside of this ring. You can use these as distances. So your distance off course would be the black ring. Your distance to or from your departure or your destination would be on the inside. And your rate, you know, your rate is going to point to a number. And you have to use a little bit of common sense. You have to move a decimal, it's it's going to be in degrees, but uh, you'll have a paralleling angle, depending on whether you're doing from your departure or to your destination. You'll have a paralleling angle, and you'll also have a converging angle. You add those together, and that's your total converging angle. If you intend to end up at your destination from your the point that you're off course, you would use that total converging angle. And I hope you found this informative and I hope you learned something from it. And um, that's uh, the examples from the E6B.